Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing aftershows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Autumn Chickless, and welcome to the season finale after show of House of Cards, episode 13, chapter 39. Like I said, I am Autumn Chickless. You can find me on Twitter at Autumn Chickless. I'm Julian Dujeric. You can find me across the board on all social media at Julian Dujeric. And we have a lovely guest with us. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jasmine Simon, and you can find me across all social media at Jasmine Simon. <laughs> and my name is Quinn Skillian. You can find me on Twitter at Quinn Skillian. <laughs> we are so happy to have Jasmine joining us. And before we start the show, we'd just like to throw out there that her new show, Ballers, is going to be premiering on June 21st, right after True Detective. You best check it out. On HBO. HBO. On HBO. On HBO. Yes. Yeah, and do now it. you can get HBO, HBO Go, or HBO, HBO now. now. So there is no excuse that these people cannot watch Ballers. It's going to be big. We're all going to be watching it. We expect you guys to be tuning in. <laughs> so, we expect it. And hopefully we'll be right back here. Discussing that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> June 22nd. <laughs> yes. so, we are going to be talking to you. All right, Krista. So let's get the show on the road. Let's do um, it. So we start Let's out. With Rachel. Mm. Rachel. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting to me that she mm -hmm. has been such a big presence mm -hmm. throughout the season, especially with the emphasis on Doug and his storyline, and yet this is the first time we physically see her. I thought she was a ghost. Okay. Uh, right? Well, she for all like intents and purposes, she was a ghost. And, inter and also interesting because I wasn't sure if Rachel knew Doug was alive. I don't think that had been, since we haven't gotten to see inside her brain this entire season, right. we weren't, I wasn't sure if she had thought she had killed D Doug at the and end of last season. she said that she thought she did. Well, yeah, and then she said seeing him on the news or whatever, and that was finally like explained, but it was like interesting. I didn't know this entire time if she was still running from him or what. Right, I mean, I, I actually thought the same thing, mm -hmm. where initially when we were introduced to her again, I guess, I thought she must think that Doug is dead because as far as she's concerned, she bludgeoned him with a brick Bloody in the middle bludgeoned. of... bludgeoned. Yeah, in a very gruesome manner. Yeah. If I were her, I would have thought we were dead. And obviously we get that insight later that indeed she did. So she's gone through a lot of trauma. Yeah. I had forgotten that Doug, I guess that Doug's um, rehabilitation or his you know survival story would have been like on the news. That seemed like... Chief Chief of staff. To yeah, the that's president. right. Yeah, exactly. Of course, well, I guess we're on a first name basis with Doug. So yeah. It doesn't Obviously, seem he's just no. good old Doug. <laughs> exactly. Just wholesome, sweet, caring. <laughs> you know, warm, warm Doug. Yeah, yeah. Doug. Yeah, needle bearing. Yeah, Doug. <laughs> Doug with a little whiskey. Yeah, a little bit of whiskey. Little, just just a smidge. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is our first time seeing her, and she is not in the most glamorous, living the most glamorous of lives. She's working in a grocery store. She is, but but that being said, she seemed to have built a little community around her. With the yeah. ladies. She's yes. in a boarding home, yep. it appears, because she was standing in line to take a shower. Yes. And it's interesting, you know, she's, she's, you know, we see her and she's really working. She's kind of busting her ass like at this. She's a bar back, it looks like. She's working the, all these doubles at the grocery store and she's just trying to make all this money. And at first you're just like, she's just trying to make an honest living, like she's just trying to get back on her feet. But mm -hmm. there was an ulterior motive there. Yes, which obviously we will get to. But um, something I wanted to point out just about the, uh, the opening sequence of all of the different shots of mm -hmm. Santa Fe, mm -hmm. which was so interesting. I almost felt like maybe it was going to be a... Um, a political ad. Like when it first started playing, I'm like, oh, is this going to be a campaign mm -hmm. ad? America like a, works. Yeah, like in America, I thought it was going to be an, uh, an AmWorks uh, campaign ad, and then for it to go right to Rachel, it was just kind it was, of. A, it was a different. It was a different start for us, for sure. And yeah. I think this whole episode was um, by far the least political episode that we've seen. Uh, this mm -hmm. season. I mean, there was hardly any, any politics in this episode at all. Yeah. It was all relationship-based. Yeah, this so I just thought, you know, that's interesting, you know, trying to maybe put the politics in wherever they can. 
Yeah, it was definitely much more, I agree, an emphasis on the relationships here. So, speaking of relationships, you have Rachel, obviously you're going to have Doug. And Doug is on a plane <coughs> going to Caracas, am I correct? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. He's going to Caracas. Venezuela. To Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah, which is where my, one of my I best friends is I feel like you can't say Caracas, Venezuela without saying it like that. Caracas, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know if I can say that Venezuela. at all. So, <laughs> I, I, I can Caracas. because one, one of my best friends is from Caracas. Caracas. Very nice. I've had my... Caracas. You've had, you've had, you had you've years had to practice. Exactly. I, I'm cheating. So anyway... Um, Gavin is living on a houseboat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gavin was whistling. Yes. <laughs> Dippity doo dah when Doug walked in. It's a sign in. of happiness. <laughs> yeah. He was living free. Yeah. Ignorance but is bliss. Was, uh, it was so, free. yeah. And he's cutting up his onions <laughs> or whatever. Like, eating a knife. He's like doing his thing, and I'm like watching him cut his onions because he's got this knife, and then he hears a, he hears a sound. And I'm like, he should probably hold on and to that, that knife. knife. Yeah. <laughs> don't, put that, don't put that knife down. Yeah. But I he, know. Yeah, it's but like you did. have a weapon of choice in your hand, <laughs> or maybe not of choice, but at least of oh, some hair or something. You put I mean, a knife versus a cane. Was it, was that what he. But isn't it crazy that Doug is just like. Doug. Total thug. Doug the thug. Doug. Doug. Hashtag Doug the thug. Hashtag Doug. Hashtag Doug. We're gonna start. Doug. Honestly, this whole episode. I love that. Doug. Doug. A grave. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Doug, Doug, Doug a grave <laughs> and wow. was a thug. Yeah. All Doug season, thug, it was so grave. slow and sad for Doug. And this was the point, the pinnacle for Doug when he went to Caracas, Caracas. <laughs> and then knocked on that door. Um, yeah, absolutely. So he beats the hell out of him with this cane and basically threatens him. Threatens him. Says, "If you know, I found you, I will find you again. Yeah. And if this is the wrong location, Liam Neeson, I will even... find you and I will kill Very you. Very much Take so. Taking part five. <laughs> yes, I will kill you. Starring Doug. Sorry, so, Doug. <laughs> I guess what it, my point or what I want to glean from this, you've already covered, which is the fact that this he's been so. I don't want to say complacent because he certainly hasn't been complacent, but it has been such a slow journey this season for him. So slow so and pitiful it was at some points. Very pitiful yeah. at a Doug, lot of points. Oh God, so it was nice to see. I mean, nice, terrifying. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure where to lean on this scale. But there was action and there was no, him doing something. I gotta tell you, the the darkness in this episode. I think I was craving. Mm-hmm. Season two was so dark. Yeah. And I and that's why like everything that happened with Doug this entire episode, I was just like, yes. I mean, I mean, it was scary, but I was like, it's so it was tense. invested it was the tense. entire time. I loved it. It was a build up. Yeah. From the first episode when he was found and doing rehab, and every step of the way when he fell off the wagon, got back on, his brother yeah. came, he saw the kids for the first time. All this was building up for you to think that he was going to make a change, and the change that he made was a very dark one. Yeah. Like, he went a totally yeah. different... You weren't really sure where, which which way he was going to come out there. Yeah, I'll get to this at the end of the episode, but I think it's really interesting how... You're right. They led him up to have this big change, and it really didn't happen. Mm-hmm. It didn't. It didn't at all, but we'll, we'll get he there. He got we'll get sucked there. back in. Yes. Anyway, so Caracas. let's talk about Frank and Cla- <laughs> Caracas. <laughs> Do we all just um, want to say it one more yeah. time? Caracas. Caracas. All right, now we've, now we've officially gotten it out of our system, ladies and gentlemen, I promise. So let's move to Frank and Claire. Oh, gosh. And yeah, let's. Claire saying um, on the plane of their own, we've been lying to, to each other. other. Yeah. Frank goes, what do you mean? And obviously it cuts off. Later she addresses this statement, but we've seen Claire over the past few episodes take a really dramatic shift. Obviously there's been an emphasis this season on their relationship strain in the White House. Mm-hmm. And just but like in her feeling unequal. Absolutely. To him. It's really been heightened over the last few episodes though. With them sleeping in the separate bedrooms mm-hmm. and then she made a point to he made a point to say I've never slept in here before mm-hmm. and she's like, I have a flight in the morning mm-hmm. and him going back to the other room. You could tell that there was a lot going on under underneath everything. Something was brewing. But you didn't know what it was until you figured out that she felt like she wasn't equal. Yeah, it, she's kind of just like you know we've we've gone on this entire journey together. Why does Frank get to reap all of the benefits when re- in in reality we are interchangeable? It could have been me sitting in this chair. Mm-hmm. Who sa- was it? Tom that said something to her? No, it was when she was campaigning, and someone said that it could have been you. She was somewhere in the episode, and mm-hmm. someone said it was the it was, mother. It was the, I was about to say it the mother. It was the yeah. mom when yeah. she went to the door, and she was like, Susie. "Why don't you? I would vote for you." Yeah, and I think at that point it kind of clicked in her mind like well they could be voting for me because I she did a lot of dirty work in the first and second season oh absolutely she was like a henchman but it's it's still really hard to vote or vote whatever root for Claire because all of Frank's obstacles pretty much this season have revolved around her shortcomings 
I know. You know, her deal, her her deal with the UN, you know, uh, the, the, ba- the baggage that she has with the abortion, like everything like that has all been, you know, all of his kind of like, all of his, all of his, you know, obstacles yeah. or his, the walls he's been hitting have been because, you know, I just don't, I, you know, Claire wasn't a good UN ambassador. She's not. She's not equipped. You see, I don't think th- that necessarily negates all of the work that she's done in previous no, seasons. No, I don't think. Though, so, I don't think so either. But when you're actually looking at it, being <clears throat> like, she seems inefficient. I wonder, are they setting that up? Just hearing it out loud, are they setting it up? If there was a female candidate, which there is going to be, hopefully, mm-hmm. with Hillary announcing that she's going to run, if there was a female <laughs> candidate, would these kind of things be the obstacles that they face? Because, like you said, Claire has all this baggage. Like, she's emotional. She got too emotionally involved with the UN, and she believed something that the Russian guy told her, and it caused the Navy SEALs to be Mm -hmm. dropped and shot that we'll probably discuss later in the episode. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly going to be something that is brought up, and it's already brought up with a lot of female politicians, Um, and really just women in the workplace. But particularly when it comes to politics, a lot of the questions being asked are, you know, how can you balance have raising you balance a family? Yeah, it's, like, it's as if emotion. It's as if there's this notion that women can compartmentalize their emotions. Like, there is yeah. that notion, and it's when they just actually, they ask any mother, women can you know? multitask. They can. Listen, better than men. Listen. Any of our mothers, you can interview any of them and they'll tell you we can compartmentalize our emotions. Exactly you know what I mean? Again. So mm-hmm. it's, just, it's it's absurd. Yeah, but yeah. these are the things, realistically, that women in the workforce face, yeah. which are these questions that we may find ridiculous, but it's something that Claire has had to face. Well, this is the thing. She had an abortion, and that means that by default, Francis did too. But yeah. no one will go and say, I ha- we know that she, your wife had an abortion. It wasn't Francis's. Well, it wasn't Francis's. She did have one of Francis's. The one in the notebook was in college, yeah, but yes. she had an abortion for Francis that as well. Yes, that is very true. true. So yeah. the point she's is, had like two, is yeah, she's had about 15. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hold yeah. On, remind, <laughs> remind me, because I, the one that I was thinking of when you said that was the one the in the notebook. The one, yeah. Right. In the notebook, but in the second season, or was it first season? It was second season. I remember her saying that she had an abortion with Frank's child, with, but I was trying to remember if the public knew that. So do you, wait, no, the public only knew <laughs> about the one in college because she said he raped her, mm-hmm. and yeah. then she had an abortion, right. which was not true. The notebook proved that it had, the time was the off. Time it, wasn't, yeah. it was not the, the, the result of the rape. Yeah. So, But the point is, is those guys aren't being... It's not a discussion for Frank that his wife had an abortion. Or even if they knew it wouldn't be an issue for him, no. it would be an issue for her. But I think all that brought up... And, and then vicariously an issue for Frank. Vicariously. But no one right. would not... They would blame it on Claire. Yeah, you know? I mean, I guess I'm just wondering... Is are people's criticisms of Claire because of are unfair because she's a woman, or is it just because she's she wasn't she's not like politically minded enough? Oh, I definitely think it's a little bit of both. I don't think that it's that she's not necessarily politically minded because she, she is. is. Yeah. She's remarkably. Oh, yeah. I said um, I mean enough. You mean you know like I mean? experience wise? Savvy. Because you do have, and something I love about the show is that they do have representation of really powerful women kicking ass Jackie. in office. Look at Jackie, Jackie. Look at exactly. Dunbar. Yeah. Dunbar. yeah. Look at Kathy. You that's have, why. That's why I'm wondering if, if that's if that's the statement we're making here because the show hasn't seemed to you know. I don't think that that's ultimately. I think it touches on. Seems kind of old school. Yeah, I think it touches on certain elements. I mean, in the debate that we saw last episode, we uh, they were talking about private uh, school and mom. private yeah, school and yeah. mom. So it touches on those issues. That's definitely true. But I don't think that they're making a grand statement that because Claire is a woman, yeah. that they're treating her differently. I think that ultimately, what that more focuses on is the fact that she is the wife. So there's the nepotism argument, yeah, and also that she lacked the experience that they would like to see as the ambassador of the UN. But bringing right. it back and, to and like, so I think that both those things are completely valid criticisms. Yeah. That being said, she. I mean, you were gonna say. Something. Well, I just wanted to d- d- go back to the point where uh, ab- about the the abortion. I think also the fact that they're Republicans has a lot to do with Frank you know, and Claire. Yeah, they're, no, Repu- they're, 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 they're Democrats. Democrats. No, they're Republicans. No, they're no, Democrats. Democrats. I, no, I'm certain they're Republican. Then comment survey, below. And let survey us know. Says, yeah, comment. Yeah. Because because when Jackie I, I was with had Dunbar, this argument, I, I had this argument before they're Democrats. Are they? Absolutely. Okay. Because they you, made it confusing. Because when Jackie and Dunbar met in that abandoned gas station, and she said, "Do you want to be my vice president?" Remember when Dunbar yeah. said that, and she said, "No, you're going to need a Republican with a penis." So that made it very confusing because they were all supposed to be in the same party, and she definitely she said Republican or did she, she say said, Southerner? I, I, we'll, we'll look I've into it. We'll look into but it. But I'll tell you why. Um, Maybe it's definitely part of the Democrat one. Party. I'll make this point. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and I mentioned this in earlier comments, that they made Claire and Frank 
part of the Democratic Party because the tropes they talk about a lot about entitlement. Mm. So they followed mm. a lot it of... It would be too hard to have them be from the South and be Republican. It would Agreed. make them... A that's little, that's first the of all, this is Hollywood. That's scandal that's Republican. So, oh. By the way, you can't, have, have, you can't have yeah. Robin Wright and Kevin Spacey in a show about <laughs> Southern Republicans who are True. killing people that, yeah, for corruption. Exactly. You can't that's do why it. you can do Southern and you can do Democrat because that covers a more of a broad thing. scale. Yeah. Yes, bringing okay. you back to this episode. Okay. We covered okay. a lot. Um, so you I hope have... that's not super general. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it, it is, staff? but... No, it is. you're a Democrat, Sorry. please, it is. please, please comments. We're talking about the general perception that we know it's false, but that is something that you have to keep in yeah. mind when you're talking about politics. Yeah. People think certain things. They certain have things. stereotypes. Especially being, coming from broad, Hollywood. Purposely, we're being broad. Exactly. We're being broad brush. Yeah. So, go, strokes. back to this. Um, campaigning. Yes. You have um, Claire and Dunbar going back and forth. Yeah. And you see throughout this Can process... Can we reiterate the word back and forth? That 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 sent like back and forth is what this entire episode was yeah. about. Yeah, I wrote the words back and forth about thirty <laughs> times in my notes. We have Claire and Dunbar going back and forth. We have Claire going back and forth as to whether or not she's going to be with Frank in yeah. Iowa. We have Doug going back and forth deciding whether or not he's going to do what he's going to do. Every single thing here was back and forth. Was back and forth. Absolutely, people's changing their minds, the kind mm-hmm. of fleeting decision making, that kind yep. of stuff. Very, actually, that's a really nice observation. I'm looking down. It was my really great. Right now, uh, really great. Direction. We, we talked about this a little bit off camera. Uh, the, the juxtaposition of, of Dunbar and Claire, the juxtaposition mm-hmm. of Claire, this is a little later on in the episode, walking into the, the White House bedroom and then shutting the doors that was and the chance of that. The you know, chanting. Oh, oh man, man, like that stopped. Like the direction here was just and you spot know what's on. great about stuff like that is since they don't pull stunts like that very often, no. when they do, they're it's super effective. effective. Oh, yes. So you have this campaign, and it's going back and forth between Claire and Dunbar, and Claire seems so, the smile on her face is so robotic mm. and we've seen this file more and more and I remember watching it going I I it's don't see crack. what's so funny is it's a full uh, mouth smile you know it's the full Nothing teeth smile eyes. yes that's true but normally when Claire smiles or at least what I've observed is it's very kind of demure and coy mm-hmm. and, like, and it's almost <laughs> you know it's, it's that like you know, I'm, I'm Claire, and I'm beautiful and sexy, and I'm just going to be very composed and put together. But now, all of a sudden, it's this big, like, look, I'm, see, I'm smiling. smiling. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to throw up in the car, but I'm smiling. I'm, exactly. in, I'm in pain. So the broader the smile, the... The faker. The faker. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so there was that moment. Let's talk more about... I think it's actually, interesting that... That Frank has Claire speak so often publicly, and we this is the first, we saw like one glimpse of Dunbar's husband. They haven't seen well, him a lot. the public loves Claire. Exactly, That's established. Claire is gorgeous. Maybe She's Dunbar's smart. husband is just like not a good talker. That's right. And also, people don't care because he's not in the public eye in the same way. Mm-hmm. Claire is the first she's lady. the first lady. She was the UN she's ambassador. a celebrity. But we but we talk about Dunbar's family a lot, and we don't really see them. It's a different as a secondary when, thing about her children and about her mm-hmm. money, but not mm-hmm. about who they are. We don't. But know also, her kids like that does or, make her a little bit of a flatter character for us. You know, it's hard for us to completely ever side with Dunbar, even though she's a pretty likable character. It's hard for us to completely because we don't get to see behind the veil. You know, we 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 haven't really been introduced there. I disagree. I actually kind of prefer it that way for now. No, I have no, I, I have no problem with it. I'm just saying that, like, you know, that's just another re- that's just another reinforcement of while well, we're always going to be Team Underwood. Yeah, we're. Good. I, mean, I was not I'm, Team Underwood this season. I was like, you guys are crazy. Yeah. I was like, Frank took away the Social Security. Somebody's <laughs> grandma is gonna be hungry. Well, mm-hmm. here's the thing: they've, they've, these past, the first two seasons, like they've just been clamoring and biting and. But yeah, just yeah. trying to get up there, and once they're up there, they can't hold it they together. Don't yeah. to they don't know what like, to do okay, with the power. Yeah. And this is something that we've said last week and previous weeks. Like it's it's super frustrating. Yeah, it's because you root for them. You root for them this entire series, and then once they get the power, yeah. that's, 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 that's my triumphal. problem. That's the problem I've had with this season, though, is that like yeah. watching them, you know, bite and scrape their way up was so much more interesting to me than watching <laughs> Frank and the old hanging office. off the ledge. Yeah, trying well, desperately. Going- to pull himself back up, like that's like a little less interesting. Yeah, what, well, what's happening now, and we'll get to the end of this episode, and we'll talk more about it. Is I think that that scrappiness is going to have to come back in full force. Now. Agreed. So, um, as we were saying, we have, um, yeah, we see Rachel um, saying, "Meet me out back," because she's going to get her new mm-hmm. identity. But we'll talk about that a little later. What did you guys t- think that was? You guys think that she was going to be? I was like, is she selling drugs? Is she a prostitute again? Is this yeah. Like, this is- uh, you know, when she walked out, I knew what it was. 
Like, mm-hmm. as soon as she walked out the door and he was looking around, I was like, she's pay- she's working because she wants a new identity. I think initially, I was like, well, what is she doing? What's going on? But I think I put two and two together when I walk- when she walked out. Yeah. Like, okay, she's trying to buy her way out of this situation. Right. So, now the scene of Claire in the bathtub. Yeah. That um, shot, man. Best, oh. one, one of the best scenes in the entire episode was this scene coming You thought so? I thought so, because Claire made a point. So do you want to say what it was? And then, because we were talking about this before the show. Well, Well, maybe you should. Yeah, I was about to say, you you are passionate about it. I I am, because Frank is such a backstabber. Mm -hmm. He he stabbed people in the back. He stabbed his wife in the back plenty of times. When Tom, writing the book, when he went over to to the Jordan Valley, when she asked him not to, so many times they were a team in the first and second season. I mean, she brought Guy Meacham home (laughs) for her husband, and she did a lot of things for her husband. But that scene was so pointed because the point was, if you're going to fuck me, look at me and fuck me. Fuck me like a dog, but at least have the decency to look at me. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. And he couldn't do it. So that means it shows her strength and his mm-hmm. weakness. Because she's like, look, you've done all this stuff. You've thrown me around. And if you remember, he tried to take it from the back. Like, he's like, oh, you want me to do this? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it throws her on the bed. And you think, oh, my gosh. Because they haven't had sex this whole season. And yeah. you're like, okay. Only, only the, once. the once real early. And it's First her. episode, I think it was. Second, I Second. think. Second. Yeah. yeah. But the one time they had sex this whole season. It was it's actually furthers your point. She comes in and it's to bring him up oh, yeah. because right. he's like on the floor oh, crying. Yes, yes. And she comes yeah. in and, and she she mounted it. him like that freaking rowing machine, like, which we saw again. finally, right? Again, we finally saw it. Again. plug. I was like, what is that <laughs> <laughs> but the point was, is she said, you know, and he was willing to fuck her from the from the back. Yeah, yeah. But, but she said, no, she said, look at me. Look at me. And then he was like, I can't do this. I don't know. Get the first lady her own room, and she's flying home in the morning. Frank is so good at at stabbing people in the back, but it takes a real man to look at somebody and do them wrong, and I think Claire got her strength right there. In that moment. In that moment. She, definitely mm-hmm. convinced she, her. she got all the strength that she needed because her husband had done a lot of shady things to her mm-hmm. this season, yeah. and I think that was a very powerful definitely. scene for, for Claire. It was very powerful and very effective because, listen, I definitely wasn't expecting because that. she's so demure and put together, mm-hmm. so that even when she has her outbreaks, you're never expecting her. You know, you're mm-hmm. not expecting, you know. She slapped like, the fuck shit out of him. Slash. She I hit know. him so she hit hard. Him so hard. She caught oh, back. I could not I believe it. Yeah. Oh, shit. She had and momentum she did, like, on twice. it. Twice. Yeah. Twice. She had momentum for sure. So yeah. obviously, like, he grabs her. Yeah, it's nothing he, outside of a response to the, the yeah. like, beating that she's giving him. And you're right. And, and then he does, he chokes her at the end of the episode. Nope, he does choke her mm-hmm. at the end of the episode. And oh, that was, oh, everybody who's watched knows our happens. Yeah, you know what happened. That was another, like, spoiler alert, <laughs> this whole <laughs> show. Her. I know. Well, everybody closest... everybody who's watching this watched this entire right. show, like, right. eight weeks ago. Right. You All know what I thought was weekend. was really interesting? We've seen the tension between the two of them this entire series, and when he grabbed her face, I thought he was going to hit, hit it right. I, I too. Oh, yeah. It was the closest we've ever gotten to seeing Frank lose, like, it. lose it, right? Well, Frank. so well with Claire. <laughs> yeah, Claire. <laughs> with Claire, definitely. So, um, let's move on to Rachel and Doug. All right. Yes. Mm. So Doug buys a big white car, <laughs> a big raper van. Yeah. He buys a raper van, and I'm thinking, "Let's just call it what so it is." So <laughs> immediately, he buys a raper van. Buy, he buys a raper van. With no license yeah. plates. No <laughs> license plates, and it's one of it was one of those things where I knew he was he wanted to kill her. Yeah, but it was so confusing though because Doug cared so much about her. I he was wasn't like confused, no. but he was so twisted and deranged yeah, and dark. Just, you know what I love is all the scenes with Doug and uh, and Rachel are always like in in like nature like the woods and like in the desert and stuff like that because we normally mm-hmm. see Doug suited up in his very very clean apartment yeah he, it's know, like great sterile <laughs> so it's just it's just sterile. Sterile. really interesting this kind of two the d- dichotomy between those two I, I didn't like we did we, we mentioned the back and forth thing. Uh, I didn't like the back and forth narrative with uh, Doug and Rachel uh, when it came specifically to whether or not he was going to kill her. Like um, he goes, oh, I loved it. I don't know. I don't know. I knew instantly when he drove away. He was, he was going to come easier. back. I yeah. knew instantly that he was never going to be able to let her walk away. Yeah, mm-hmm. like emotionally, he wasn't going to be able to because of the. 
the president he wasn't yeah. going to be able yeah. to because of the FBI he wasn't going to be able to. So as soon as he drove away, I was thinking, run, Rachel, run, go to the grass, yeah. hi, duck. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was so disappointed in Doug, and I'm I'm so I mean I don't want to say this, but I, I'm gonna say it. I'm so happy he actually followed through with it because me too. I was happy about it. Yeah. Honestly, there, there was I know. Okay, it's dark. Whatever. It's House of Cards. I have been cra- I have been craving something like something you know that gr- I understand. I'm, I'm the same way where I'm craving something gritty as well. Where because we're used to it. Yeah, we're so used to it. I mean, I'll never forget. And I'm ready to close this door. Yeah, I, I I'll never forget. Throwing her in front of the frickin' train. train. Oh, I, remember, no. I remember that going. Oh well, wait, because <laughs> he just threw her after the train. That was ridiculous. I remember waiting. Yeah. Like I thought it was gonna be one of those cheesy sequences where it like stop comes back. It's like oh, that's exactly no. what I wanted to do. He so like I was, I was definitely craving more of the commitment. Right. Some commitment. Yeah. So that I get. Follow through. So we know she. We know he's gonna do something shitty with her when you buy the big rape van with no license plate. Honestly, anyone. I feel like you should put a mark on anyone and who buys those cars. He herself, didn't he? He said, go ahead and pee back there. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were kind of yeah. waiting to see if he was going to pull over and like just let her go outside or whatever. Yeah, and he, Again. And he has I, the, he goes to Stargate to the bleach as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Like acetone. 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 Yeah, and what and is that called? What does that take with? <laughs> what is that called when you, when you put the rag over someone's mouth with like, what is that chemical Pixie. called? Oh, um, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't even know. It's, it's, I don't it's, know. It's, 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 the, the it's been a long time since I've covered someone with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Chlorophyll. <laughs> chlorophyll. 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 Not chloroform. No, chloroform. It's chlorophyll. Okay. Chloroform. Leave a comment. Yeah. 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 I'll kill oh, it. they will. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. just going to be like, you guys <laughs> don't know shit about killing anybody. Yeah. No, we're entertainers. And we don't know about killing. God, you guys know nothing about killing. Yeah. 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 Ye
This is the Fantastic. insight. This is the incredible insight that we, we have to offer you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's Only get on After Buzz TV. This is it. All right. So All right. let's talk about Sorry. Claire and Tom. Um, Claire, Lead on. Yeah. Moving on to Claire. Oh, wait. And Tom. I wanted to talk about. What do you? I just thought. About? I just thought the moment when Doug sat in the grave that he had dug for her. That Doug had dug for Doug Rachel. Was, <laughs> was I just Doug thought the that was, thug. I Doug, thug. Doug a. Yeah, ditch. Dug a ditch. ditch. I just thought that was <laughs> really, dug, really dug powerful. Yeah, no, it absolutely. It was great directing this I episode. I thought he was going to kill himself for a second. I Yeah, I wasn't sure what was happening there. Um, Doug fought way he was too hard like, to get Chief of Staff to kill himself. Yeah. Doug has fought. I mean, did you guys notice at the end he only had slight a slight limp? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. he was like, I went to physical therapy. Yeah. I had like, this ready. pimp walk now. I'm not killing myself. No. <laughs> this pimp, pimp walk. It's but true. It, is like, it is a moment of like, reflection. Him walk. sitting there was like a moment walk. of reflection. You know what I mean? Does yeah. killing her mean killing... You know what I mean? I don't know. No, absolutely. They gave so much moment. to get to where they were. I felt bad for Doug. I mean, Doug was just Poe this whole season. He was yeah. just pitiful. Yeah. Because he had given so much to the Underwoods the first two seasons yeah. and this this season. He's addicted. Frank wouldn't even call him back, though. I know. You know, he know. like they cast him to I the mean, side. I mean, that scene when he duct taped his hand to the spoon, like, that was crazy. That was horrifying. He was, it showed that he was committed, though. Like, he had worked so hard that he wanted this position. By the way, it's why Frank takes him back. Yeah. And listen... Doug is a genius, though, because he kept that journal, and he used it against against Frank with Dunbar to gain her trust, and then just to burn it in front of the uh, in front of Frank. He played all the chess pieces perfectly. Yep. Yes, he moved them around perfectly, and he earned his job back at that point, which was another point of contention yeah. with Claire and Frank because she was like, yeah. the, "What the hell?" Doug was kind of our Frank this season in terms of chess moves. Yeah, he yes. was. But the thing about Frank that is so unique to him is his charm and the way that he manipulates and that we get to see the process with him you know breaking the fourth wall and telling yeah, us everything yeah i think, think his it. charm his charm fell what a little short at? this season it did. Right, let's let's talk about let's talk about Claire and Tom Claire and Tom yeah i really want to get to Claire and Tom so um because this is a critical moment when she makes a decision, yeah, part two, exactly, where she re- it really solidifies because I think because I, before right before this she had agreed to go to like she was to eating Iowa. she was eating dinner by herself at the White House. Frank yeah. calls and he says, you know, if I need to make a a, a winning speech, a winning speech, a success or concession, concession speech, yeah. um, I want you to be there. And she says, okay. Yes, and I like, think I'll be there by the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I think the whole like "fuck me" scene definitely solidified in her mind, or it, it made her. It started aware. in her. It, it's planted the seed in her mind that this is not going to work. Yeah, this was the decision. This was kind of solidified that understanding. And this is, yeah, this when, is the most um, the most obvious time we've ever seen Frank need Claire. Yeah, he, he needed uh, her her there in Iowa. Yes, I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the next season. He cannot season, but win without her. No, no not no at way. all. Not at all. So you have Claire and Tom talking about the fact that she passed out and she said that I hate I, him. I hate him. I hate that I need him or something like yeah, that. I hate yeah. that I need him. Yeah. Yep. And how I hate much how much they need, they need each, each other. other. And she had she couldn't remember what she had said to him when she was passing out. So she was like, "Can you like you know?" She's like, "Why did you memory? take advantage of me like that? Yeah. You did this." I'm like, "No, you were giving blood. I watched." <laughs> yeah, that's true. I know she had like, orange juice. Yeah. She dropped it. She's yeah. like, "You let me pass out or something?" Like, I was like, "No, let, you didn't not, let you do anything." No, how does that work? Right. That's not science. No, that's not science. <laughs> that is that is not science <laughs> at all. Not. Any scientists that are watching, does that, that is, is that how science. it works? Yeah. Comment below. If you're yeah, if you're um if you're giving blood and someone else is watching you. And then you pass out. Is it their fault? Is it their fault? Comment should, below. Should they stick their own blood? <laughs> yeah. Should they do and like yeah. vampire diaries? Yeah. Take a bite <laughs> and then feed it to you. <laughs> so yeah, he, she talks about, and this is the first time she really admits to this idea of I hate how much we need each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've known, like we said, that there's something going on with Claire for a while, but this is the first time she has voiced this voiced the real problem. The disdain mm-hmm. that she had for needing him. And, yes. I, and I don't even think she knew it herself. It's not like it's no. been brewing, you well, know what I mean? She had no idea what why she was feeling the way she was feeling, I think. I Agreed. think before, they played off of each other, though. They He took a step, she took a step. They worked together. Agreed. Every season, they worked together. Every shady thing that they did, they did together. They would consult in their kitchen over everything. I agree. I mean, the, I missed the cigarette uh, in the, sharing. The, yeah. yeah and the so this season, yeah. this season, he didn't consult with her about anything. Mm-hmm. Not about Doug, not about Tom, not about anything. Which is one of what's just so funny because it's one of his arguments that every major decision I've made as President of the United States, I have come to you for. When 
really that's Ish. not been the case. But also, it's not Ish. even it's not, the Ish. major decisions aren't the ones that move and shake. It's the tiny little ones in between that are like that can be you know. Yeah. Now, granted, there is the argument that you know she he can't come to her with every little decision as president of the United States because there's just not enough hours in the day. I'm sure she's not even asking for that. But she's not, exactly. She's not asking for that. What she's asking for is to be considered an equal and not even necessarily just by him, I think, but she, like she says, it's so hard for her that she couldn't even earn her position. She had to ask for it. But yeah, is there a time during their fight when Frank's like, what, what is it that you do want? Um, where Frank says that? Yeah, like, yeah. It, does he say that to her when they're like fighting, being just being like, "What is the outcome that you yes. that you are?" Yeah, yes. I remember that's that. a good question. What is that's it? That, what does she want? From the presidency. That's obvious. And he said, "There's only there's always only been one seat in here, and yeah. you knew this." But I think the tipping point was when he said, "Um." I, you are nothing without me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that's definitely. I don't think it's that she what necessarily I, wants the most president. I don't think she. I think she wants her own thing. Yeah, I think she okay. wants her own thing. I don't think that she wants the presidency either. I think that she wants something that she feels passionate about. Like she used to do the water thing, and she felt very passionate about. Yeah, that. and that was something she built on, on her, her own. own. Okay, and so the UN could have been something that she could have been passionate about, but she did let her emotions overrule her and her inexperience get in the way, and she made a judgment call based on her emotions which caused the, yeah. the seals to get killed or the seal to get killed in the Jordan mm-hmm. Valley but I think that the point that he said that you're, that you're nothing without me when really we're nothing without each, each other, other. Yeah. and it went back to I hate how much we need each other but now Frank is feeling himself in, in a place that he feels like he doesn't need her anymore which is yeah. so false or that he's so just taking, taking her false. for granted what's what's funny is the thing that I thought was was kind of the pinnacle and the, and the paradigm shift for Claire in, in that moment was when um, when Frank says you know being first lady is not enough being, you know, working at the UN is not That's enough. Exactly. And then he's, she cuts him off and she goes, no, it's you you're who's not, you're not, not enough. enough. That, for me, was... And I mean, it just Whoa. cinematically, obviously, that Whoa. they made a point. But that, for me, was just... like That was the paradigm shift for me. And yes. I just thought that was so powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, and I want to point out the fact that Frank does say that he needs his wife. And he says to her, when we lose, or when I lose this... It's your fault. It's your fault. So I think there's no out in Frank's mind the importance of Claire. Maybe not the extent. I don't think he realizes the extent, but it's not one of those things where he's going yeah. bitch, I, leave. I don't I think the things I, that they've had to do to get where they are resonate as deeply with Frank as they do with Claire. That's what it is. And Agreed. that's why that's why he, he doesn't feel the full weight of her. He uses everyone, and we've seen him use Everyone from the first episode to episode 39. He uses people at like pawns. And I think Claire is seeing that he's using her the same way that he uses everyone else when mm-hmm. before they used people together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And so now, yeah, he does. So it's it, also fun, fact. Like, fun fact. Just as like a, <laughs> as a human below. being, when you have. That was on a TV show the other day. I can't remember which When one. you have that much strain on you as an individual and you have that, the, that many decisions to be making, it's nice to be able to discuss it with someone in a way that isn't necessarily just all business. Mm -hmm. In the same way that all of us, if it's a spouse, a um, boyfriend or girlfriend or a romantic partner or just a best friend, we all need a counterpart. We need a sounding board. We need to throw something at people. We need someone who we can throw shit at and have them either come back and say you're totally full of it or or that's that's legitimate. Mm -hmm. So he's losing the one true ally he's had other than Doug, obviously. But more so than Doug in ways because that's she, his wife. It's yeah. his wife. She knows everything about him. Yeah. Every secret, every dirty detail, yeah. every yes. great thing, every is it, minute detail she knows about Is it something him. about the fact that now Doug is staffed again that makes Frank feel like he doesn't need Claire? Like maybe Doug fills the void a little bit? I think mm-hmm. I think it she I think he that. does I think he does know that he needs Claire. I think the difference is Claire uh Frank doesn't realize he knows how important Claire has been to his ascent. But what he doesn't, what he's failing to see, it's this kind of mental, um, uh, there, there's just the, a clash, I guess. What he's not seeing is that Claire feels like without, he would be fine, he feels like, okay, she has been so important to me to get to this point, but I'm here she, now. I'm here now, and she doesn't, she can't be on her own. Yeah. 
Like, like, what can you do without me? I exactly. can still be the yeah. president without you. Exactly. Not without me. But that is a, a tricky place to be because at that point he takes her for granted. Yeah, yeah. thank that's you for articulating she, that. Yes, and that's how she feels. She feels very taken for granted. What can she do without him? But I think next season we're going to see what yes. she can do without him yeah. and, and how much he really needed her. Because yes. without her, half of his plots and plans would have fell through. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, mm-hmm. they definitely need each other. I, you guys know, or you don't, because you have your this is your first time joining mm-hmm. us. I'm always been a huge fan of their relationship. I am always been Team Underwood because they, they were a team. Yep. from the first day of the first episode, they were a team. When you're like, oh, he's shady. Oh my gosh, she's she's shady too. She's going to help him do that. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. She knows about the affairs. Oh my gosh. Like, yep. they are the epitome of a, of a team. Yes, they were best friends, that. and it stopped being that around the fifth episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alright, so now obviously he says, he grabs her by the face, has his whole speech. That was brutal, by the great way. Speech. He said, great, great speech. Great speech. Great writing. Great, like, great just acting. Great performance. Acting. Oh, my God. By both of them. Yeah. I was like, her face. The directing. The lighting. Everything. The way the DP lit that. Yes. To, to cast the shadow on half of her face when he was... I mean, it was just... I thought he was gonna and hit I, her. Yeah, I thought I it was. Too. I thought it was really interesting that he's just like his whole his whole speech was kind of like we all have a job to do. It was like super metropolis, like super Fritz Lang, and, like yeah. socialist. Like, and bitch, your job is to be the first lady and, yeah. and get on the plane tomorrow. And yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what he said. I just thought that was like really, really, really interesting. That that's kind of like what the the, the tactic that yeah. he uses. Uh, um, yeah, it was know, so was abusive. Crazy, man. It was such a, a mental abuse. On his part, he had all the power. Like it started the scene, and you thought she was going to have the power because she was sitting in his chair, yeah. and her back was turned, and she was of looking out. She was sitting there. It's, I mean, yes, like, uh, and then and then he he tried to take all of his power back. Do you yep. know, like he he told her, "I don't care what you do, but you're going to be on that damn flight to New exactly. Hampshire." Exactly, and it's the first time, really, that he has treated her as though she was a businesswoman in his yeah in his company. Like he treated yeah. her like everybody else. Exactly. What did you guys yeah. think about him keeping that egg from the Easter egg roll? Oh well didn't he say that it was like he made I, I can't remember. He said he real. felt bad throwing it away. Exactly. Yeah. He made some off comment. He didn't feel like there's like, any deeper sim- symbolism there. Well just just the fact that he says Not because really. I think there was a moment where she was like, Oh you kept that and yeah. he goes, oh, I felt bad throwing it away. away. So I he think he tossed that was it out the window. Yeah. She wanted it to be a yeah. alley. And interesting that she goes to reach for the cigarettes or whatever and she doesn't share it with him. She just smokes it herself. She doesn't yeah. even offer it to him. So that's right in the desk. It's right in the desk. It's not even hidden anymore. Well yeah. So So now because when they're working things out, that's when they share the cigarette. Yes. So and when they're not sharing, they're so not sharing anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is over, and coming to the wrap of our episode and the end of the season, there was a very powerful moment that we discussed. Yeah, I want you to talk about it because you pointed it out to me, and I just I didn't con- make that connection. So, so if you can. when the Tibetan guys were there making that beautiful mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The sand, sculpture. sand sculpture, the note and, and the note. So he so he asked Meacham to get him a picture because he missed the whole thing. So he wrote Claire the note, and it said nothing lasts forever because they ended up wiping mm-hmm. it away and pouring it yeah. into the river. Mm-hmm. But except he said us. nothing lasts forever except us. So cute. So Damn it. so one of the last scenes is her sitting on her bed the She's, next morning. After after he had assaulted her in the Oval Office, and she's looking at the picture, and I'm thinking she's going with him. Yeah, because that's what I said back and forth again. She's, you know, they just gonna, it just seemed like everything was over with them, and now she's looking at this picture, and we were like, oh my god. And I said to myself, nothing lasts forever except for you guys. You're going to yeah. go to New Hampshire. And you're you're gonna going to figure it out, and then there'll be more disca- discord there. I thought the exact same thing. Like, I had actually okay. hovered my mouse over the screen and saw that it was almost over, and I'm like, oh, this is how it ends. This is just Happy a continuation. Ending. Happy yeah. ending. But then it didn't end that way. And then it didn't. And it was so blasé, too. Like Claire just... She threw it away. She yeah. threw it away. Oh, no, well, there wasn't that... And I... Uh, thank you, Robin. Robin Wright is... Thank you, Robin. You're, you're, you're flawless. You know. Girl crush. <laughs> Robin Wright. Those pencil skirts? I was like, can somebody collar give me some bones. pencil skirts? Collar bones. No one wears a pen- pencil skirt like Robin, in that swoop. Like, yeah. I know. I, I, I mean, like, they know about my total girl crush. Yeah. <laughs> right. Girl. Yeah, emoji, we know. Emoji with hard eyes. <laughs> The Robin, emoji with hard eyes is definitely. <laughs> this moment, if Robin, if you're listening, if, you, if you're watching, we yes, love you. We love you, and, and we love this skirt. moment. And your pencils, your wardrobe is so damn fabulous. And also this moment, where 
it could have been so over dramatized. Maybe it was direction, but you took it beautifully, babe. Um, I'm sure it was her. I, she know, just, you know who directed this? Because one? she, uh, I think Bo, Bo wrote it, but I don't know who directed it. I don't. Oh my we'll, god. We'll, we'll find out. Because kudos to you, yes. whoever directed this. But episode. she comes in, and it could have been one of those over dramatized moments. Melodramatic. I'm leaving you. I know. Mo- hair toss. Or Back whatever. flip over the she shoulder. Fa- she faints onto a sofa. Yeah. And it, it was I'm almost hypoglycemic again. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. It, exactly. It was a great analogy. It was almost an afterthought. Like she was, she had yeah. already yeah. decided. Oh, oh by, by the, the way, way, I'm leaving BTW. you. BTW. Boo. I'm leaving I'm you. Out. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it was great. Babe. I'm leaving you. Yes. I'm leaving. It and was great. To it's the point the... where it stuns him. What? He's like. Claire, mm-hmm. what are you? He's, he's like, no, you're even, not. You know that you're getting in the car, is what he said. Yeah. yeah. What were your guys' immediate reactions after she said that? Yes. Yo! No, that, I was that like, was the noise yes. that came out of my yeah. person. Like, oh. it's funny because my immediate reaction was, like, "What's Frank gonna do? <laughs> oh no! How he can't be president without, without her." You know, what Mine's I mean? was my first girl initial thing went to Frank. Power. I was like, <clears throat> "Good for you! You do not let your yeah. husband, no matter who he is, treat you like that, and then get in the in the car. Yeah. Have enough yeah. respect for yourself." And I thought, "Way to go!" The first time I respect you as your own person, Claire, was right then when you said, really? "I'm le- absolutely." And I was she just so said conflicted. It so like, I respect her, but it was so unexpected. Well, I, don't I, don't I, don't think it's, I don't think it's gonna last forever. That's maybe that's my problem. Is you I don't think this this little tiff is gonna last forever. I don't know. I, I, don't by know. The way, I, I hope don't... it does, because that'll be ooh, that'll be an epic Look, war if, between yeah. Claire. And, ooh, ooh, be because they know each other's dirty yes. little secrets. Oh, yeah. oh my god, oh, dirty, season dirty. three. Have it they is. started shooting? For season four. I think season four, no, sorry. No, I don't think they have. Oh my god, please no. do some I oh man. I definitely I think they need to write a letter. Going to be, I definitely think no. there is going to be that element. There's no way that they're just gonna get them right back together. No. Well no. There's the potential for I definitely think there's the potential for that because there are people like me out there who love them together and love how dynamic they are. I know that this isn't the end of their relation or I don't think it's the end of their relationship. Period. Maybe their marriage. Maybe you think got, it's the end yeah. of their romantic relationship. I, well, I mean, they never really had much of a romantic yeah. relationship. They had a business, business. relationship yeah. from the beginning. They had an understanding and a mutual respect. And maybe for he'll one fall another. in love with her now that she's, you know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm you know thinking. It's too like, much of a snake in the grass. Yeah. Like, okay. Because and he's gonna need there's her. There's a reason adventure. I rolled my eyes by saying we all love them I together, know. but something just, is. I mean, something's something's about to change, and they're either yeah. gonna. Fight. I think. Both. Listen, we love. We all. Same time. Everybody here loves them together, right? We can all agree on that. But this, that particular, like ten seconds, made me want to love them apart so much. Wow. Like I, I think I, it's. I feel oh, the man. same way. I feel the same. I think way. it would be even better if they were apart. They're going to be apart for a while. I definitely oh, yeah. because there's so much You're to right. play with We're there from a writing juice perspective. Yeah. Because it was the last episode, I can just be honest, and it's my first time, so I can totally be honest. But the, the season was really slow and drawn out for me a lot. Yeah, of I didn't like the season I either. Like, but I've been really, I've been really open about that. Yeah. yeah, no. So I've been like, okay, it took me a long time to get from the third to the fourth episode, like weeks. I was like, yeah. I can't, I can't do this again. For the first time after this episode, I was like, where's the next episode? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to see what's going to happen. I had that great <laughs> point. I yes. totally had that feeling. That is so time. important with these shows that come out. You know, you're supposed to you click next. Well, the thing that I remember watching the first season of House of Cards, oh. I watched the first two episodes, and then I didn't leave my bed. Yep. Because yeah. I, just, oh, I guess I'm living here so now. So, same for me. <laughs> I, I was, like, reluctant in... Shameless plug, my producer, one of my pr- producers on Ballers, produced the first season mm-hmm. of, of House of Cards. Tell him he's a bam. Her. Her. A bam. Tell Karen, her she's Karen a bam. McCarthy, I love you. You are the best, and you're a, a bam. You're bamf. a bamf, yes. Bamf. Badass motherfucker. Oh, you are a bamf. She is a bamf. And we gave her a Golden Globe party while we were shooting the pilot, awesome. and I was like, okay, well, what's this thing that mm-hmm. you were celebrating? And I went home. And for a week, I was like, House of Cards. Mm-hmm. Every free minute that I had, I was like, House of Cards. Oh, that totally made my night representing yeah. 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 ladies. Yes. My ladies. But, but it wasn't we like, you. we love you. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm but it girl power. And, <laughs> and season two with the whole Tusk thing and him climbing the power and him tricking the president and becoming president was so good. And this season, I was like, eh. But I think we can all agree that, at least for me, I had the same exact response where I am stoked to see where this is going because as much as this kind of whole season has been this mm-hmm. slow upward climb I feel like now they have set the pick for season four to just yeah, and, it's right and, and, here, and here we are seriously campaigning next season I mean that's what it's going to be pretty much yeah. Yeah. and uh, also I think Benito Martinez should probably come back and just be you know we need a Republican candidate at one point yeah oh, <laughs> we might need a Republican we're, we're going to have a Republican candidate because he just won the nomination so going into the next season he won, he won the Democratic the Democratic nom- nomination is that so what 
happen there? Well, it, well, yeah, yeah. You beat her but Dun- in Iowa, yeah, so. but Dunbar was like, "We're going to we're going to do the same thing in New no. Hampshire." Yeah, no, but it's it, she. It, they still have a road to go. They still have. Oh, I think it's Dunbar, pretty safe to say that Dunbar if you win the Iowa caucus, that you're that you're. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was saying it's not over. We still, you know, have so much no, to do. The Iowa caucus is the one that that it's sets it all up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and the so what's happening in New Hampshire? Why do they need to go win New Hampshire? It's, well, it's the, just it's the election. They have to get the electoral. It's the implication. It, it's not set in stone yet. He yeah. hasn't won the the Democratic nom. It's no. just it's just a general. Okay, just like the feeling, the vibe. The, the general knowledge is that. If you if you win Iowa, you okay. pretty much can win but, the country. Okay. But you know, obviously, they have to finish. The way that House of Cards is, time spans are a minute will be a, a, a month. Do you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, they Ten go by fast. Yeah, right. year. We didn't talk about Jackie though. She wasn't in the episode. No, but I'm saying overall this season. What do you guys think? Since I haven't been here. Oh, I mean, I knew I'm, I'm she a huge, gonna, I'm a huge Jackie gonna, fan. I knew she was going to get back with old boy. Yes, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was, I know you are, you were kind of iffy about, I was just happy to see them actually make movements and get mm-hmm. together, so that's fine, but we do have to wrap. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can find us on YouTube slash AfterBuzz TV, SoundCloud, iTunes, rate us, comment, let us know what you think, let us know what you'd like to see, maybe not in the show because we're just wrapping up, but in we other can, shows. We can keep the conversation going for a little while. Absolutely. If you guys want to tweet at us what you thought about this uh, the whole think? season, yeah, tweet at us, leave us comments, know. we'll respond. What was your favorite theme? Oh, uh, yeah. The finale and episode. Do you agree with us, disagree with us? We want to hear it. And I'll dig, dig, dig in a ditch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dug, dig in a ditch. Yeah. Dug, dug, dug. dug. All right. All right. Dug, dug, dug From AfterBuzz TV, my name is Autumn Chickless. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Autumn Chickless. You can find me all across the board on all social media at Julian Dujarek and on Periscope. Follow me on Periscope. I'm getting a I'm Periscope. I'm doing that now. I I'm doing that. That's a thing. I don't either. Oh, I'm not. I'm not in the know. Jasmine <laughs> Simon at Jasmine Simon at Twitter and Instagram. And keep an eye out for her show Ballers yes, for Mary yes, yes. 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 Yeah. And my name is Quinn Skillian. You can find me on Twitter at Quinn Skillian. You can find me on Instagram at Quinstagram. And you can find me on Vine at the Quinn B. You're so punny. Oh. You are so punny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you Bye. next season. Bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 